Hi, I'm Eileen, and I own Farm Gal Flowers. And um, this is not how I intended to start this talk, but what Lee was just talking about reminded me of a story, um, a, a cute story. Um, so I'm a master gardener, um, and we have we they have plant clinics around town, and where you can come bring in your plant and have it diagnosed. Um, so um, a friend of mine who's still active in the organization, um, she was at the plant clinic, and this um, gentleman comes in. He used to live up north, and then he moved down here with his um, dahlia, and it was not doing well. It was like almost dead, and he brought it in, and he was like, he was like, can you help me? Like my my dahlia is just not doing well. What do I do? And then they say, and it was actually one of I shouldn't say this, it was one of the extension agents. <laughs> he was like, oh, you can't grow, you can't grow dahlias here. And he just like, you know, end of, that was it, end of story, you know. So my friend, the master gardener, she kind of hears this conversation and this guy's like getting ready to leave and she's like, and um, he's, and he's like, okay, he comes over and she's like, she says, there's this woman who grows dahlias around here. He goes, look her up. He goes, he says, she's like, you're going to just, you're going to die. You know, it's um, farm gal flowers. Um, so um, I start getting these messages, text messages. I don't know if my friend, I don't know she gave him my number. He got my number somehow. And he's like, he tells me the story. But then I did go find out which friend this was that had, you know, told him. And so this has been going on like probably for like three years now, like every season he, he contacts me, he sends me photos, asks for advice, you know, like, um, and he, I think he lives like an hour away. So we, I, you know, I've invited him to come down, but we, we haven't made, you know, face to face contact, but this has been going on for a few years. And, um, um, you know, he was just like, they told me you couldn't grow dahlias, but so there are some of my dahlias there, and um, you can grow dahlias here. And I, every season, like I, I get comments, like people are amazed about it. Um, but that's uh, one of our main crops, and probably what I'm most well known for. But okay, so I did, I changed the plan there a little bit. But um, what I'm going to do is um, start off um, telling you a little bit about myself, um, a little bit about the business, and then hopefully, um, you know, some. Some themes will develop and it'll all tie together at the end. Um, so as I said earlier, I'm Eileen and I'm the owner, founder, chief weeder, um, floral designer, accountant, everything <laughs> for my little business. Um, I do have a small crew that help me out um, during the busy times um, that are kind of like on call and help me with some of my workshops and pop-ups and things like that. Oh. Let me know if you can't hear me, because um, I'm kind of not used to using this big microphone. So um, um, this business um, is actually my second career. Um, I was a pediatric nurse for about 12 years, um, and I have a master's degree in management. Um, my, I'm from here. I'm from Orlando. Um, I was in Gainesville for a while, and that's where I had my, um, my last uh, nursing position. I was a um, clinical assistant professor um, in nursing at the University of Florida. Well, my husband um, got a job here, so we decided my family's still here, so we took the opportunity to um, uh, move back to the area to be closer to family. Um, and he started his new job, and then um, I had always loved gardening and plants and had dabbled in floral design classes just for fun. But I took that transition in our life um, to become a master gardener. So I enrolled in the program through the University of Florida. Um, and that's where I learned how to grow things um, here in our zone 9B, which is a very challenging zone. Um, and, um, but that's essentially, they teach you in that program how to grow in this zone. Because you can read books and go online and you know, read blogs and all this stuff, but um, they tell you pretty much how to grow like in all the other parts of the country. Um, our seasons are very different um, from um, other parts of the country. So I, um, so I became a master gardener, um, and then I was pretty much growing like all of our, my family's produce, um, like all our vegetables, eggplants, tomatoes, everything. Um, and then one day, my mom um, 
my parents are also gardeners, um, she gives me a packet of, um, of seeds. And they were flower seeds. And um, I'm sorry, I, yeah, sorry, this, the microphone always gets me sometimes. <laughs> um, so she gives me a packet of seeds. And um, I think she got them like in the mail or like from a magazine or something. She's like, here, take these, you know, try and grow them, you know. And, but that, I was, that was a really pivotal point for me because she happened to give me a packet of zinnia seeds, which if you're familiar with cut flowers, they're like one of the easiest cut flowers to grow. So I, you know, just kind of threw them in there. I mean, I watered them and all that, but really didn't do a whole lot. And those flowers grew and I got so many blooms and I cut them and mixed them with herbs that were already growing in the garden and started making bouquets and putting them in my house and giving them to friends. And then I was like hooked after that. And pretty soon all of the vegetables are like being um, overtaken by flowers. And my husband's like, what happened, you know? But also, I have to say, flea farming was starting around this time, and we started getting more, you know, vegetable uh, greens and stuff from flea farming. So, kind of worked out. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I became, that like started this kind of obsession with flowers. <laughs> um, and I started growing more and more flowers, and I went to, um, decided to get more training specifically in flower farming. So I went to um, Florette Flower Farm, which is in um, Mount Vernon, Washington. And while I was out there, I learned um, all about how to grow various types of cut flowers. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of Florette, but she is the preeminent farmer florist in the US, probably in the world now. Um, she's really like just changed, um, changed the industry. So um, I was out there. Um, and um, let me back up a little, a little bit. Before I went out there, I ran into John Reif, who is the owner of East End Market. And we were just kind of, we're kind of like-minded, you know, in terms of living locally and all this stuff. And I mentioned I was going to this flower farm. And he said, um, well, let's talk when you get back, because, you know, we need flowers in the market garden, because at that time they had all just vegetables. And we need flowers to draw in the pollinators. and. I was like, well, okay, I don't know, we'll see. Because <laughs> I was really just going out there just because I love to, to garden and to grow and I love flowers. I wasn't really thinking this was going to become all of this. <laughs> um, so I went, came back, didn't really like follow up with John or anything, um, but I ran into him again. And he's like, oh, well, how was it? You know, how did it go? And you know, I'm like, oh, I loved it. And, you know, he's like, so when are we starting? And I'm like, starting, you know, what? <laughs> and he's like, you know, you can go, you can grow flowers here. And they also, he also had the Winter Park Urban Farm at the time. Um, I had no property, by the way, you know, at this time, just my own little garden that's probably, it was like an eighth of the size of this room. And um, he's like, you can grow there and you can grow here. And I was like, okay. And that was my big, I realized, I, like that was my big opportunity. Like this was, this was gonna be it, this was it. Okay, so um, um, we, so that's, that is really how it all started. Um, John has helped me, you know, helped me in the beginning get started like forming the business and, you know, finding avenues to sell the flowers, giving me the space um, to grow it in and, um, um, that's really like just, yeah, how it all started. Um, let's see, let me go here. I already forgot to use this. Sorry, I was supposed to show you that <laughs> while I talked about myself. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you a little bit about the business. Um, so we grow over, I guess, probably 75 different varieties of flowers, cut flowers, herbs, um, edible flowers. Um, here at East End in the Market Garden, which is, I don't know, like 2,000 square feet, I think. And then um, you can see that on the left. And then at my um, own property, which is on the right. Um, we, um, we, sell, we sell flowers that you're not gonna see like at the grocery store 
or the flowers that don't travel well, like the dahlias or zinnias. Um, we, we grow, I tr those are the types of you know, cut flowers I try to grow. Um, let's see what else here. Um, we, sometimes we source, um, for instance, I do a lot of succulent classes and there are a lot of um, uh, succulent nursery, not a lot, there are several succulent nurseries um, in the Apopka area and I work with um, one in particular and by another um, female entrepreneur. Um, so I source my succulents from her and then there are also um, a lot of, this area is like the foliage capital of the United States. So I ob obtain some um, um, foliage from that grower, but if I, I try to grow, source from other growers um, um, in the area um, and minimum, like in the United States, um, for our um, for our uh, workshops and events. Um, so we grow organically. Um, we work side by side in the market garden with fleet farming. Um, we don't use any pesticides, herbicides. We use mushroom compost and organic fertilizers like seaweed and um, compost tea. Um, I primarily use insecticidal soap um, and good old fashioned picking the bugs off and smushing them <laughs> myself. Um, we have this firm philosophy that if you start your plants off strong in the beginning with all of those things I just mentioned, it really um, helps them form um, a good base um, for growing a lot of flowers in the future and um, not and helping them um, stay strong against pests, um, against pests and things like that. Um, let's see what else. Um, we let me think about our other sustainable price. We try to I try to encourage all of our customers to return containers to us. Um, so, um, I offer them a discount, but you know what? I found that most of our customers, they don't really care about that. I find them on my doorstep or here, like I'll get messages, Eileen, I left you the containers. So we, I really try to encourage them to bring them back and um, it's, they've been very supportive about that. Um, let's see, what else? So that's pretty much um, about who, you know, where we are, um, what we do, what we grow. Um, and then let me tell you a little bit about our services. Um, so in the beginning, did you have a question back there? Yeah. Yeah. Central Florida. Yes, yes, Central Florida. Yeah, when um, a lot of the things like we just see out in our yards, like I used, I lived in California at one point, I mean on the West Coast, California and yeah, Pacific Northwest, they would, floral designers out there, like they, um, per, they ship in like pittosporum and uh, podocarpus, um, you know, viburnum, all these things we just see like in our yards and stuff. Like they use, they ship it out there to use in um, uh, floral arrangements and stuff. So we, it's interesting when I, people from the West Coast come to visit me, they were like, oh, it just grows here? And I'm like, it just grows here, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, it, this is, um, there are many greenhouses um, um, just like outside of Orlando, like an hour away, are full of ferns, you know, and all kinds of foliage. Yeah. In fact, um, um, in June, um, I did a photo shoot for Florist Review, and it's coming out in June, and I created a dress entirely made out of foliage from this area. So, fingers crossed, hopefully. <laughs> um, so far, it looks good that it's coming out, but. Um, but it's to highlight the foliage, you know, and what's grown in this area. Um, okay, let's see. Um, okay, oh, now I remember where I was at. Okay, so in the beginning, I said yes to everything. <laughs> um, I was doing, you know, single bouquets for birthdays, get well, end of the, you know, teachers, you know, teacher gifts for the end of the school year, um, you know, selling flowers here, just everything. Um, and it was good because I got to um, um, experience all of these different aspects of having um, a, flower, a flower farm and floral design business. Um, 
However, like, so we're, pro we're like going into our fifth year now, and in the past year and a half or so, I've decided to kind of scale down the services that we provide based on what our clients want, what I enjoy doing, and also what kind of keeps the business afloat. So um, we've kind of scaled down to primarily doing flowers for events um, and workshops. So um, this, this was a recent one um, at the Orlando Museum of Art. Um, and it actually, just today I found, they didn't even tell me this, but it's currently featured um, in Orange Appeal magazine this month. Um, I was just on the web last night, and I see this post, and there was a picture of this arch in it. So I'm kind of excited about that. <laughs> um, we do a lot, um, so when I say events, um, I mean like events, uh, flowers for events, um, like at the museum. We do um, pop-ups in the area. Um, this one is at uh, Williams-Sonoma, um, where we'll be back again next uh, weekend for uh, Mother's Day. Um, that's Williams-Sonoma Winter Park. Um, that's an event here at um, East End Market. Um, that's an example of holiday foliage. That's all like grown. A lot of holiday foliage is grown in this area. And that's from a farm um, in Seville, Florida. Um, this is another event at the museum. Um, this, uh, we work with, um, I work with a lot of um, local business omen owners who happen to be a lot of female entrepreneurs, um, like at The Grove. Um, We've done several pop-ups and workshops with them. Um, and then we've done a couple of um, several corporate events um, over at the Alfond. And as you can see, um, most of these places are all within, I don't know, 10 miles, <laughs> um, 10 miles of us. So we, um, we are staying, staying, really living locally, staying locally. Birthday parties, um, again, this is another event I'm right at Williams-Sonoma. Okay, and then our other um, service, um, big service that really, really, really keeps me busy are workshops. As I mentioned earlier, I used to teach at UF. Um, I love, and I really love to teach. Um, so we, we do all kinds of workshops. I primarily teach at Lou Gardens, and then I teach here at East End Market. Um, and then we do um, workshops for corporate events um, like um, we did one last January for the Ford company. Um, and I taught over like 175 people. Um, we did, I think, succulent bowls that weekend, but it was, um, it was a great, really fun event. Um, this is just a little sample of more workshops. Um, as I was picking out some photos to put in here, um, one thing that really made me happy looking at all this is how happy everyone's smiling in the photos. And I think that's, I just wanted to point that out because that's, that's an important, important thing um, with the workshops. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just, um, oh, I wanted, I also do private workshops. Sometimes I get people who um, want to do like a one-to-one -one thing. They like specific, specifically want to learn, for instance, this woman in the middle um, wanted to learn about dahlias. So we spent a few hours together just talking about how to grow dahlias um, and then doing a, doing a piece, uh, doing a flower arrangement in the, in the garden. Um, we've, we, not, not, as more rec not as much recently, but we used to do um, events with kids, um, which are fun, um, but we've, I've, I've, I've had to cut back a little because obviously the kids are in school during the week and they often wanted to do it on Sundays and um, I've kind of had to say Sundays are, I can't, just, I can't do it on Sundays anymore because <laughs> I primarily teach on Saturdays, so that would take my whole weekend. But, um, and I have kids. But anyway, sorry, I digressed a little. <laughs> but that's an event at the top there that we did in uh, the, the uh, courtyard here at East End Market and then over here at Lou Gardens. Um, let's see. Um, over, I, I wanted to point out um, with the business, um, so this opportunity to do this talk kind of 
made me sit down and look at the journey that I've been on um, the past five years and kind of think about you know where we where I started and how I got to where I am right now and I noticed some like themes that developed um, uh, over the that have developed on this journey and that I thought I'd point out to you that um, tonight that I thought were really important um, aspects um, of my business. Um, one is timing and opportunity. As, as, as I mentioned to you earlier, when John, you know, said, let's, you know, let's grow flowers in the market and, you know, we'll sell them and blah, 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 that was just, like I said, that was like my aha moment, like this is it, you know, and I was totally unexpected. So I would really encourage you to watch out for moments like that and, and, and seize those opportunities um, because it really changed my, my life, the direction, you know, it was going in. Um, and I'm doing something that I just absolutely love. Um, another theme that I noticed came up is community. Um, so I grow flowers out here alongside with fleet farming. They primarily do the vegetables. We work together to maintain the garden. Every August, September, we all work together to redo the garden. Um, it is hot and it is crazy when we do it that day, but it is so incredibly rewarding to have all these volunteers come out and then see how it looked in the beginning and at the end, and it's just really beautiful. Um, but I also have this community of all other entrepreneurs um, in the area that I work with. Like I mentioned earlier, other other female entrepreneurs that have businesses um, that invite me to do my pop-ups or teach workshops for them, other um, and other um, um, growers in the area that I source from, um, even my like the people who help me with the business aspects um, of my business, my bookkeeper, and they're all like local people in the community. Um, the people who design my logo, like I, when I was looking into that. Someone suggested, I guess you can go online and you can get bids from people like, you know, for branding and developing a logo and, and um, but I really felt like I had to like talk to this person in person. So, because it's supposed to be, a, my business is supposed to be a local business, you know, growing local flowers. And I really wanted them to get that feel for that. And um, so I ended up going with someone who lives down the street. She walked here, <laughs> she lives like down the street. Um, and she really nailed it. I think you guys have probably seen my logo, but it really like reflects the business and um, the feel that I wanted people to, to get. So um, community is just a really, really big part of my business. I could not do this by myself. Um, I, like next week I know I have two workshops. I'm teaching a pop-up. Um, and I know other things will come up because they always do during Mother's Day week because that's our biggest week of the whole year. Um, but I have like all these people already lined up to help me next week. Um, um, so that is just an amazing part of my business to have people to reach out to that will help me during my busy times. Um, another thing, <laughs> this, is, this, this is something that really was hard for me, like knowing your strong points and your not so strong points. So this is a business. Um, you know, I love gardening, I love being outside, being with the flowers, arranging, but there is, it is a business. <laughs> I have to pay my taxes. <laughs> um, that sales tax, I know, I always thought that is not mine. I have to give it back every, you know, quarter. Um, and I, you know, I just, I don't like that part of the business, but it's something you have to do to keep it afloat. So um, I actually got some really good advice from Aaron at Florette, that flower farm I told you about where I did training. We all, I mean, we learned about how to grow cut flowers there, but she did focus on the business part too. And this was one of the things, like know your strong points and your not so, so strong points and get people to help you with those, um, those weaknesses like the bookkeeping and things like that. Um, so I know my strong point is I can pretty much grow almost, I can pretty much grow almost anything. I mean, if I stick my mind to it, I mean, there are some things because of, you know, they need a chilling time or things like that, that I, I can't grow. But for the most part, I know that's my really strong point. And, um, I also, I try to help people, other people, um, with that too. And then I get help with my weaknesses, like the bookkeeping and things like that. <laughs> um, so, um, 
And then also, and this is probably the most important um, theme or aspect of my business, is the relationships. Um, this is really, this is, this is the heart of my business. Um, I have found that people want to, they want to talk to me, they want to, they want to know about the flowers and how I do it, they like to have a, a relationship, like that man I mentioned to you earlier who was, you know, seeking guidance about his dahlias, um, but I, you know, in this day and age with social media and everything, a lot of times people, like, they already know you kind of when, you, when they come to like a class and they want to continue to build that relationship with you. Um, but I, I like that too. I mean, I, one of the most rewarding aspects for me is like when, when students come to my cut flower classes in February and then they reach out to me like this time of the year, April and May when everything's blooming and they send me pictures or they ask me for advice. And is, I love seeing that whole process um, of them you know, learning to grow and then seeing the flowers. And like when I get a text, like this huge flower, I mean, that just like makes my day. Um, so I love that, you know, the relationships that I have with my students and with my clients. Um, I have some clients, you know, who every year they contact me when it's a special birthday or, um, you know, a party or something like that. And it's nice to reconnect again with them every year. So I really feel like um, in any type of business, um, people want to have that relationship with you. Um, and I'm lucky in mind that flowers are that, that connection between me and my clients. Um, I guess that I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but this is on the left is our, um, um, our philosophy that I wrote like the fall that I started the business um, um, here, you know, at East End. Um, and it was good as I was going through this process, you know, preparing for this talk tonight to revisit it. And you know what, it still stands today, everything, you know, that it says. You know, our initial goal was, you know, to bring something beautiful to the garden, to attract pollinators for the vegetables. Um, and um, it, yeah, it's still all passion, hard work, and heart love. Um, so um, I was happy to see that we've really stuck to our values and our goals, you know, over the years. I think I might have, yes. So I would be remiss without touching, you know, on some of these issues about why local flowers. Um, and, you know, Lee talked about some of these issues already, but I'll just, you know, kind of go over it a little. Um, so local flowers require less energy. Um, you know, when you're, as Lee mentioned, a lot of flowers come from South America. Um, Africa, Asia, and that requires a lot of energy to get them all over here. Um, so if we buy local, um, we are using less energy. They last longer because when you buy a flower cut in South America, um, it's going to travel here and not in water, in a box, and um, by the time it gets here, um, you know, its base life has decreased tremendously, whereas if I cut a flower, um, I, I probably cut it yesterday or today, um, and then it was immediately put in water. So just, I mean, that's just a fact. It's going to last longer, you know, in that, you know, scenario. Um, and I also cut it at the right time um, so that it does extend the vase life um, of your arrangement. And it's safer, as Lee touched earlier. We grow organically. We don't use pesticides um, or herbicides. And, you know, as I mentioned, we grow some edible flowers. So yeah, I don't want to eat anything, you know, with a pest, you know, pest, you, with pesticides on it. So um, it's just, it's safer in that aspect. And then of course, as you can tell from all the, the, the stories that I've just mentioned of, you know, working with other entrepreneurs in the community, it boosts the local economy. Um, when you use, when you buy from local businesses, um, it, 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 helps the economy and that that business is more likely to um, invest in the community and also work with other local businesses and it just kind of comes all full circle and helping um, the, lo the, the local economy. Whoops, I think I skipped one there. Oh, okay, so that's just a little bit how to reach me. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that's about the gist of it, you know, how we, you know, um, have grown through the years and, you know, the types of practices we 
um, we instill in the business. Um, but I'm happy to ask, you know, answer any questions about, you know, the business and living locally and all that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.